think that's that's the not uh, by the way yeah in the top left we do have Oliveira in the bottom right it is stats so something that this man has not achieved is a first place at a global world championship for this guy here so yeah definitely a little bit jelly there I guess that's is but he's been he's been kind of back into not exactly form but I guess he's been looking better and better recently it's really great to see him back though playing rather strong here and this is I'm live right now here but yeah So, let's see what those guys are going to do here. So, that's going to scout. We saw already earlier that Oliver tends to be very aggressive. He did go for a proxy as well in the PvP in the sorry TVT series then. And yes, that's is back in GSL. He's he's looking good, by the way. I think he made a second place, right? Or am I mistaken there? I think he just made a second No, it was oh no no no. He was a third and fourth place, of course. He did lose to Hero in the GSL season one this year, by the way, yeah. Of course. Excuse me, and I think he made a round of 8 last season. And a quick check, actually. No. He dropped out in the first round, fortunately, here. For stats. He was in a group with Rogue, Dark, and Cure. Definitely a really tough group. And he went out in third place there, unfortunately. Alright, Reaper's coming in here, and we do have the Adept waiting on the high ground. Let's see how Stan's defensive play is gonna shine here. I'm gonna get a hit, actually. Definitely a little bit of a mistake. Could cost him the Reaper, and in fact, it does. That looked like the most bronze play ever, right? Just have the Adept on attack move and hit the Reaper. But it ended out working perfectly fine, and now you can go across the map. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna denote mining from the one SV here for a while. That's some great stuff with that one adept. Definitely a mistake there by Oliveira. Who is going into a second barracks and third barracks. So this is gonna be a three racks follow up. Not exactly three racks because there's going to be a factory first, but the starport will be delayed here in favor of some extra units. And uh, Oliveira is he's very fond of coffee. And coffee and Oliveira, they're very good friends. Coffee is the master of two base timing pushes in this matchup specifically. TVP. And I've seen a lot of two and three racks openings without star ports from coffee against Protoss players recently. So yeah, really looking forward to what Oliveira is going to bring here in this series. Robotics on the way here for stats, third base on the way as well. Blink is halfway done. We do have two gates only it seems. So it's a two gate blink observer play here. Yeah? And then the third gate. A little bit... Heavy on the tech, a little bit light on the units. He does not know the follow-up from his opponent. We do see a starboard though, so he's not going to be one of those crazy siege tank um, three racks pushes. But this is misplaced, my friend. You need to this as well. You need to get this in order, man. This is so this is so attention intensive. Really unfortunate. This still should be a rather quick push, we're gonna see though. There's only one tank, there's gonna be concussive shells. And this is a little bit of a mystery to me. It's not gonna be combat shields, but concussive shells first. One engineering bay. Let's see how he wants to play this. Maybe it's just the flavor of the month right now to get concussive early. 
I really like it personally, but it's definitely an unusual play here. Getting early Marauders and Concussive. Going very low on the tanks to try and fight those Stalker armies here. Concussive is not ready yet, maybe pushing out a tiny bit too early. He's gonna go across the map now, is he though? I make a couple of reactors here. Not starting up combat shields is a little bit of a tell though. He's pulling SCVs, there we go. The, the funny thing though is he's only pulling like 8 SCVs. This is like the weirdest... M like mediocre commitment I've ever seen, I feel like. I don't think he's gonna trade that well, is he? And he has so many things on the way behind this though. It's such a weird, weird opening it feels like. But yeah, I, I think stats is more than enough to break this. He's gonna snipe the tank now and then he's just gonna clear out this army and it feels like this didn't do anything for Oliveira. He didn't kill any probes, he lost 9 SCVs, he's just gonna GG. This is such a weird game, man. That's such a weird game. And like, he had, he had plus one on the way, he had combat shields on the way, he had two reactors on the way. For his medivacs and starport and his factory. It didn't make any sense. Like if you if you're looking for something specific, I guess yeah maybe. But that's just had more units. You just killed him, bobbed him. Completely didn't. If if you get across the map maybe without being seen, but that's such a big big gamble, especially against those blink openers who are kind of all about keeping you back and kind of uh, picking at your army while you go across the map. So I don't know, man. That was a very odd choice there. It definitely not look good there. Let me see if I can find the next match here. Mirror vs. Stats game number two. Gonna be on Ghost River. And yeah, so far stats is up 1-0. Let's hop into the game. In the top left we do have Oliveira, and top right it is stats. And Ghost River, the fastest or smallest rush distance. It's not the fastest map though in the map pool. Um, in fact, this map happens to be one of the easiest to split maps. It's very defensible with all these high grounds and ramps. And like very choky areas where you have a big potential arc for your own. As a defensive one, so... It's it's a very defense. it's actually very hard to attack into your opponent on this map. But if you can like keep on denying a fourth base, for example, that's where it really shines. But the fourth base, it's so far away from your own main base. Like if you go from here all the way to down here, that's such a far distance to go with your army. If it's for harassment, it kind of works for Protoss the best with the weapons, I guess. And Zerg can get like speed links over there, but yeah, definitely tough to uh, go across with an army and poke out the fourth and then defend your natural. It's almost impossible. A rather interesting map even though it has a very plain and simple design it, it turns out to have very interesting strategic uh, movement or movement wise strategic meaningful matches yeah the probe is gonna nibble at that SUV can he kill it can he kill it can he get the kill oh he's gonna pull away actually wow I'm gonna be so afraid of that reaper oh no it's a, it's a decoy it's a decoy and now he's gonna come in from the top when is it gonna happen? He's gonna wait until the Reaper goes out. And it went out, and there he comes back and snipes the SCV. Stats. The master of old. Give him the title now, I think. That's enough. We've seen enough. 
He has done it. I think he already won the game. Yeah. It's already GG. You're never gonna get like back into the game. It's time here as Oliveira. Adept staying at home here again. He knows there's a Reaper, of course, on the map. But this denied all of the scouting here. This Reaper was supposed to get. He does not know anything right now. For all he knows, there could be a proxy target somewhere, which is just a uh, delayed attack timer. In fact, it's just going to be a normal opening. He really likes this. Well, actually, wait, this is not a normal opening. What am I talking about? This is a robo first, so this is not going to be a blink opening. It's a robo, one gate robo into a second gate. So let's see what stats idea is going to be here. I kind of would dig a war prism. Probably going to be war prism. It's going to be double observer, man. This is such a strange opening and into a third gateway. A very vision heavy opening. This is kind of a... Um, kind of a set, well, like... Um, an idea that was explored in StarCraft Brood War very, very early, just before StarCraft 2 released way back in the day. And you would make 3 gate Goon Observer, and that would be the standard build in this specific matchup Protoss vs. Terran. So you generate a lot of vision on the map with these observers, and then you go into uh, ranged Goons. Of course, there's no ranged Goons, there's only Stalkers here. And there's no widow mines for the opponent, so you don't need those observers that much. But they're very handy against um, banshees. They're handy to just attack the opponent's army movement. They're good against widow mines as well. And well, stalkers are decent, even though they don't have blink. He's very light on army units, though, man. Just two of that army supplies observers just makes that immortal. He finishes that one up. Very interesting positions. He does not see this main entrance, basically the main ramp here. So he scouts basically for a drop, and this one's for a later approach on the third base. This also sees a drop if it goes down there. But he, he kind of suspected, maybe he saw a glimpse of the raven. He sp suspects that there's a raven on the way. Gonna try and come in again with the observer. He's gonna see the raven needs to pull out. And yeah, good call here by stats. Needs to kind of rotate that observer and kind of hide it in a different position. I don't want to see it sieged up here where it was earlier. Wow, very interesting stuff here. So we've got charge on the way with a ton of extra gateways and storm. And the third base seems to be a little bit later than usually. Of course, on the side of Oliveira, we do not have a third base. And with Medivac 3 and 4, oh no, it's 1 and 2 actually coming out. It seems like still Oliveira is going to be able to push across the map. He does have a Raven, which is going to be good with a disable against any Colossus type of composition. Not against the Templar composition, especially if Storm manages to finish up before Oliveira goes across the map. And it does seem the way constant chrono boosting is going to be happening here. We're going to have Charge Lord Storm against the Raven composition. I don't think that's gonna be working out here for Oliveira. This Raven could just get feedback before any anything, and that would be such a big waste. Oh, if he could get the feedback. He's not gonna get the feedback though, but he's gonna get the storms of his life. And trade so well with these storms initially here. And those are gonna buy enough time for his immortals. Oh my god, that immortal yeah, that's a sick dodge. And now these immortals are back and then can fire and wow one more storm is gonna completely ravage that army raven is gonna get sniped and uh, time is gonna get pushed back here oh sorry Oliveira is gonna get pushed back this also was seen by this hero observer here from earlier so stats is all the information he needs he knows about this drop coming in he can intercept it 
He knows about this drop coming in. He can intercept it. He even has a Templar in the mix and maybe potentially feed back those medivacs. But I see there's not too much energy on them now. Probably would love to see a feedback though. And Oliveira is kind of thinking on his feet right now. Hey, wait. What? This is a weird position. What am I... This nearly didn't do anything what I was looking for. What am I... What do I have to do? My opponent already has Storm? What? Am I that far behind? Yes, you are. There's no ghost... Oh, there is a ghost academy. Hope to soon, but yeah, he is. He, it's a good transition point though. And it's good that he's making this work. Also with the third base up and running. So he's not that far behind, but he needs to hold this push and he does not have the MP ready for this exact fight right now. And this could just be the end in fight if Stats manages to get the storms he needs here. He has certainly enough units to get in here. He needs a couple more uh, charge slots though to complete his army. One more Templar is going to join the fray here. And first ghosts are arriving, but they're waiting with their MPs, seems like. For those storms, first storm is gonna hit, second storm, beautifully done, yes. A third storm, and he just kills the base. He already buys enough time just walking around with the warp prism here. He's even gonna kill the army, and he's gonna take the game. Man, stats looking great in this PVT here against Oliveira.